Good morning. This is Judy Gulov with Artistic Artifacts in Alexandria, Virginia. And today we are going to work with some mono printing. And mono printing started way back when with a piece of glass, then I went to a piece of acrylic, and then we went to um, Knox Gelatin, where we make these pieces that we could keep for you know a week in the refrigerator and print from. And, and they were kind of interesting as they degraded and added some texture and stuff. And then they came back to having gel press plates that you didn't have to worry about refrigerating them. You do have to kind of be gentle with them and make sure you pull your paint off and that kind of stuff. But they're reusable and they come in multiple sizes. So gel press is the product that we uh, sell in Artistic Artifacts online. And you can see this is a smaller size, like say I think. So this is perfect for my card making. Um, this is a little bit smaller than some of my journal pages, but you know, like it goes this way, but that's okay. I don't worry about the edges. So today we're going to give you um, some ideas, hopefully to spark some inspiration for my paper people. Now, with that being said, you know the rules. If you can do it on paper, you can do it on fabric. You can do it on fabric, you can do it on paper. That's what we say. So please try, experiment, see what comes up on your side. Please post things in Facebook group, Artistic Artifacts Creative Minds. We would love to see what you're doing. And please share it, it's a group, it's a community, and it's for the people to participate in um, inspiration and, and helping answer questions and that type of thing with uh, products that you purchase from Artistic Artifacts and what you add to it to make it better. So, um, gel print printing. I um, definitely look at it a little bit different. Um, I'm a little more of a collage person and I add multiple layers to my painted pages. So, let's talk about paper for a minute. We talked about gel plate. You have to have a brayer. Um, I don't necessarily recommend a foam brayer, but whether it's a hard brayer or a soft brayer doesn't really, you know, I don't know that that's a big deal. Um, we have great journal books. So this is a, a collection in different sizes from Dilutions. And then we have Strathmore and it's mixed media paper. So we have them bound or unbound. Mixed media paper allows you to add a lot of water, a lot of glue, all of those kind of wet things, and it doesn't bubble. So it's a very strong paper. It's my favorite paper to use when I'm working with printing, because again, I'm gonna do multiple layers, and then I'm gonna add glue and paper and things. I personally, like to work with sheets. I do have a couple of books in the works, um, but I, you know, instant gratification, that's what I'm all about. So I can pull a sheet off of that pad, I can print, 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 let it dry, pull another sheet, pull another sheet, rather than worrying about whether when I close, when I print in a journal, do I have to leave that one page open? And then what do I do, sit there and watch paint dry? So I have a tendency to try and work on multiple pages at a time, and that just seems to be the method that I've gotten. So let me show you, when I do my pages, so this is the pages that I've done before I've actually started collaging or, or figuring out what my theme of my book is. So that's how I work in single pages. And then I'm going to stitch this with a big basting stitch into a book cover like this. And that's how I assemble my books. And these have got at least five layers of paint on them. Let's see, this one is sewn. See, oops, well, some of it's sewn. Um, can you see how I did this here? So I stitched it. So that is my end result. And no, my pages are not all the same sizes. 
but I'm going to kind of tell you how I work my way towards those, um, the backgrounds and the paints and things. And this one, I was very proud of myself. I cut a hole in it and I was able to place the uh, embossing underneath it. <laughs> Sometimes you have happy accidents. So that's where I end up. So let me show you where I start. So for the most part, we use um, artistic artifacts. Question? Two questions. Okay. Uh, one, is it all paper, no canvas? Yes, it is all paper. And when you stitch your books together, do you stitch by hand or machine? Machine. Great questions. You can stitch by hand. I just happen to be, I take a little zipper foot and have a small um, a foot I can get my hands on and I just zoom and stitch with a single stitch. And I do lengthen my stitch some. Um, this one doesn't look very lengthened, but normally I would do that. So you're, you're actually stitching. What weight thread do you use? Um, whatever's in my machine. <laughs> but I would, I probably, for the most part, have a 50 weight thread in my machine. You could use a 12 weight that would show your thread a little. It would be a little bit heavier. Um, and then we also have wax linen, but that would be a hand stitching only. And I'm not into fancy bindings. I'm into simplicity. So that's kind of, this is what I know, and that's why I do it that way. Um, and, but I know that there's lots and lots of other ways to do bindings. And why the zipper foot over other feet? Small. A zipper foot's really small. And see, because as you add pages, um, it becomes harder to sew them in. So you've got this flat here, and I'm stitching it here. Then I'm adding a page, and I have to stitch here. So as these pages build up, it becomes a little tougher if you're using like a number one foot is really wide, a zipper foot or something like that, small. So you want the smallest foot you can get. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Another question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what do you use for your cover? Um, these are made with multi-purpose cloth, which we cannot get any longer. But there's actually a better product out. This is my first choice on all my covers going forward. It's Craft Text. We can get it in white. You can get it in multiple colors. So this Craft Text is $20, and I would say you would get multiple um, book covers, journal covers for these. And you get the, pretty much the same results as you would on the multi-purpose cloth. Better results. The multi-purpose multi cloth eats paint. This, not so much. So it's going to sit on the surface. It's going to give you a little less paint, so it's, it's better. Um, it sews through nicely. The other thing that happens with these is you have colors. And what they've started doing is washing it. So to have this nice, beautiful gold to print on already gives you... Um, a color and this is $22.99 the pre-washed color and um, you know sometimes people don't want to start with white and it's perfectly fabulous I pulled some of the lighter colors out that are in here they're all online the other surface which I haven't done yet this is cork this would print really nicely also would it would sew up great as a journal cover. So this is 34.98, 12 by 18 cork cuts, and it's giving you three colors in these packs. And there's like three assortments. So I'm changing what I'm doing with my journal and covers. These are what my recommendations are for covers. They take paint nicely. So that's, and I think they sew easily also. A little bit better than what I was using before. You could use canvas. You can use that, um, uh, yeah, canvas. I was going to say Osenberg, but I don't think that that's heavy enough. It's, it doesn't have as much body. All right. You good? Okay, good. Keep asking questions. Those are great questions. All right. So, one of the things that I'm going to do two things in, in what I consider my basic jelly plates. Um, and as I said, we're using these artistic artifacts, textile paints. Uh, I could not, um, they are great for fabric, they work for paper, they have a squeeze bottle on them. You don't need a lot of paint. 
you can use a little as long as it comes out of the top while you're doing while you're squeezing your paint out yes can you collage fabric on craft text yes you can i would fuse it i would use misty fuse i think that that's just a really um it, nothing's gonna slide i guess is what it is so it keeps it in place and then you can stitch on top of it hand stitch or machine stitch so i would collage on top of craft text with misty fuse and then i would sew on top of it all right, so one of the things, and I forget this until I get in the swing of things, is that I put my stencil down first. And as you can see, my stencil is much larger than my plate, and I go off the edge. So I'm only taking part of the stencil. That's what I like. God, that's an awesome stencil. I know, isn't it? We have new stencils. So I tried to find stencils that you can order online from us instead of going into my book. All right, now, let's see. I try, yes, this, I do use a little bit of room. So I try to take, see, I have a little bit of paint on that and I'm gonna use it. So I got a little bit of base on there and I need to do the back of this page. Actually, I, this is with a round gel press. So let's see what we can do, because that's only one step better. <clears throat> Needs about five more layers. What is it Seth After says? You're only like one layer away from Magnificent. So there you go. So say I want, I'm gonna move it on you. And there's still paint on there. And there's still paint on there. So that's how I fill my page, even though my page might be bigger than my um, gel press. Um, this is another really cool, cool stencil. So I was on a um, panel with Upcycle. So those of you who are in Alexandria, Virginia, Google Upcycle Alexandria. They have great, great stuff. And Susan, one of the co-founders, was talking about uh, fruit netting, vegetable netting, and that this is what inspired this one. So if you don't have the stencil, go empty the bag that the oranges are in, and then you can print with that. So again, <clears throat> I'm working with something that's larger, and I tend to, you will see, this is how I work, I put my paint directly on here and I mix it as I roll it. That's probably a lot of paint. Some people like to have a paper plate and they brayer it. These have been sitting for a while. It's probably too much paint, we'll see. So I'm mumbling to myself that this is probably too much paint, but, um, it, and it just changes the print. When you use less, paint, it actually um, makes the print more detailed, if that makes any sense. So we're going to, sorry, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and this. So I always have multiple pieces of paper that are done. I'm gonna do, this was from a uh, rubber stamp that was very, very large. We unfortunately can't get them anymore. So that's just teasing you. Is this a uh, stencil that we have in stock? Yes, this is a stencil we have in stock. Um, sorry, 
I took the packaging off. I don't want to know what the number is. Um, I also, so you can see there's still paint on there, right? Well, I can assure you I still have a page somewhere that, so I've kind of pre-folded this for my book. So I use as much paint as I can and I just keep pulling. So you can get multiple what they call pulls. So you got that. I do not do anything to my plate for the next color or the next um, page. I just keep working on the same plate. I don't clean my brayer because I think it's sometimes interesting to see what happens as the paint continues to mix. So that's, and I'll, and, and as I said before, I will put multiple layers, at least four to five layers of paint on the, both sides of this page before I actually get into collaging my, um, my book. So I keep pages and pages of things out. Now, we talked about collage and fabric. One of the other things that I do is I collage paper. And this is gonna be kind of an experiment. This is on Steam Seam 2, which I talk about. Steam Seam 2 light. It's double-sided fusible. It's sticky. I mean, yes, it's fusible is sticky, but you can place papers and pull them up and move them. And then when you iron them, they're permanent. So I did this page and I thought, okay, well, let's see what happens if we can um, jelly plate print over it. So let's see, what are we gonna do this time? So. like the colors to mix as I am using the brayer. Again, I'm a little heavy handed on the paint at the moment. So here is another, this is collaged with uh, matte medium, not uh, probably soft gel. I like soft gel because I think that it is a little bit thicker than matte and it does not rip my pages. find if I use another piece of paper. I'm really hard on stencils, but if I put another piece of paper on top of them, tissue paper is a really great thing to use on top of the stencil. That way I'm, I'm not as bad on the stencil because I can be kind of hard on them. Is that to prevent them from tearing it? Yes, yes. All right, so this is totally, totally an experiment. So. I'm going to take this piece and see what it does to my collaged images. Okay, hold on. And then I'm going to get another. Keep going because there's more paint. Oh, we took a few papers off, but that's okay. We can put them back. So, all right, I don't know about you. What do you think, is it better? So this is a piece that's collaged here and then there's some paint. So um, I think this is too much paint. Maybe I would like it if it was a little less paint. So let's try this. Sorry, it's hard to photograph. So, um, so I always, when I was sewing, or um, I, we went through a period of time with complex cloth, 
And I will come back to that. It was a very informative period for me to learn about death and that there's a couple of things. One layer, two layers is better than one layer. And this can be applied to art quilting, to painting, to sewing, collaging, any mixed media, all of this applies. Multi-layer is better than one layer. Um, I think that you want the, the person who sees your finished artwork to be grabbed when they walk across, when they come into the room with the piece. But you also want them to come closer to see some of the details that you have included in your piece. Um, and, and those I really do try to think about as even as I'm quilting, even as I'm painting. So that, that complex cloth is, is the goal that I'm always going for. That's why there's always more than one layer. So there's a comment mm -hmm. that you should call your process multi-printing rather than mono-printing. Well, yes, you're right. <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. That's true. <laughs> All right, we did lose a few pieces of paper, but we keep them. Now, I'm going to show you Sharon, who writes, writes our fabulous newsletter. So we send a newsletter out once a week on Wednesdays that tells you um, new products, if what the Facebook Live is, if we're having a giveaway. Um, she always works very hard at finding links that are interesting that we think you might like. So Sharon does that and does a fabulous job. Um, and if you don't get our newsletter, please go to our website and sign up for it. You will get a 10% off coupon on your first order as well. So she was looking, we were talking about working with these plates, and she came across a blog, and I think Sharon is working on the comments and giving you some links about products and information, and hopefully we'll point you toward that, about working with alcohol inks. Okay, so alcohol inks are famous for being used with Yupo paper, which is a plastic. So when she came across this information, both of us got very excited because Sharon's a paper person more than a fabric person. And so we tried it. So step one, and I'm gonna bounce back and forth just to, rem just to give you an idea, just to give you a heads up, you're gonna have to keep up because I'm gonna bounce. So the first thing we do with the alcohol inks is we put them on the plate. And I'm using the smaller plates because they'll dry faster. All right. So, and they go at a different rate. And we're going to maneuver the paint a little bit, the alcohol inks, and then we have to let them dry. So, and, and similar, so those of you who have done the, the alcohol inks in the Yupo paper, it, it, it's similar to that. It's just giving you a different substrate. And yes, I'm using all the colors of the rainbow. Um, so these have alcohol in them. So let me just give you some, it took me a long time to figure these things out, but so I'm gonna save you some time, hopefully. Artistic artifacts paint is called an acrylic paint, and it is a water-based paint. Golden is a water base. Liquitex is a water base. The um, 25 cent paint, low pigment, and that you get in the um, box stores, those are all water based paints. They will um, interact and work with each other. These alcohol inks are alcohol based. So, what that means is that to maneuver them, you have to use alcohol. To take them off, I have to use an alcohol rub. And alcohol will dry fast as well as acrylic paint will dry fast. So what we have found, we experimented a little bit last night. So is moving it is a little tricky. I need a little more practice in that. 
but I think you want to cover your whole plate. So, we have so could you just use an uh, old credit card? Um, yes. Yes. I mean, um, I, I see you're using a particular tool, the, but you could just use. You can, yes. My favorite tool is an old gift card that's been used. Um, so, all right, I think that more manipulation is not better than less. I think less is better, but that's a guess. Okay, so we're going to let those dry. We have to let them dry, which won't take too long. Um, and I'll go on to something else. So I kind of showed you what I did with stencils. This is that brick stencil that I just used, and I love this one. Um, this is current, you can get this, but you can see where we started with white, already had a background painted. This is maybe the third layer. You can start seeing different colors in there. And then that's the end. That was the last, probably the last pull. So I got four pulls out of it. You have a question. Do you ever use a dropper of alcohol to thin the ink and lighten the color? Um, good idea. I'll try it and let you know. I actually, we do have droppers. I think they're sold with the um, as a fantastic product. And I didn't. I looked at it and I went, hmm. And it didn't get there yet. So yes, I think that's a great idea, and I do think it would work. Um, the other thing was canned air we used. Leslie, can you hand me that canned air over there? Um, and do the alcohol inks respond well with the brayer? I don't think so. I did not use a brayer, thanks. So we swipe the canned air from the, the, guy, the mechanic's desk out back. So this was a really good thing. I think we used a lot of it last night, sorry. You can also blow with a straw. Yes, you can. And I know I'm full of hot air, but I wasn't going there. <laughs> All right, it's drying. That's good. Um, my, my actual experience with alcohol inks is slim. I seem to be a paint girl. I'm not sure why. It just is my comfort level. Um, but I'm learning. I'm learning. And I certainly had fun last night drying this. Uh, okay, so the other thing that we have is we have these fabulous Fresco Flakes paints that our friend Seth After has designed these colors. And so we have some of Seth's paints and we have some of Seth's stamps. We, um, Paper Artsy produces stamps for Gwyn. Um, our queen of embellishments and they also produce some for Seth. So you can take your rubber stamps and use them on a plate. Now one of the things I want you to know is that paint slides. So when you use a stamp, we have these mounts and the acrylic mounts, we have them in two size. These are called mega mounts. This is a mega small and then we have a mega large. And sometimes you just have acrylic blocks. Some of you guys that do this a little more than me would know. So what happens is I can arrange my stamps here and I'm going to gently do this motion and I'm pulling up the paint with the stamp and and I honestly tried to you do this with just my hands that's normally how I do it but I have a lot more control um, and notice that I come off it's really cool when you really think about coming off of your surface. So I'm going to at least take my paint off. 
get a little bit there. So let's see how we do here. I think this is fruit bag. Might be fruit bag. So you can see the stamp a little bit. Again, I think the trickiest part of the whole uh, plate, plate printing process is how much paint. You have a tendency to put too much paint on it to start with, and you have to back that off a little bit, and that just takes time and feel. See, this is, you can see the stamping in there. So you have it built into your background. So now I can take my stamp and also put it on a stamp pad once this is dry and stamp over top of that. Um, if you're gonna build layers after stamping, I would recommend using an alcohol-based ink. So I learned that the hard way because I have a tendency to put my stamping on my first two layers and then I'm still printing wet stuff on top of it. So some of my ink pads ran. You can spray it with, um, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a spray that will set the paint below it and then you can do multi layers as well. But um, I, you know, I just use a stays on pad, seems to be the best. And there's some other alcohol based ink pads that are out there as well. All right, let's see. Uh, okay, I think we're okay. Now it's suggested, we're gonna go back to the alcohol. And the suggestion is to use white paint. Let's see, we've got a little bit. And, and they do specifically say to grayer up a little bit of paint before. So you're you're not pulling all of your ink off. So just get rid of a little bit of paint. Sorry. Alright. Yeah, there's a lot of paint on there. So I would say the better point is going to be See my brayers, my brayers not rolling. That's telling me I got too much paint on there. Yeah. Suzanne says that it's called a workable fixative. Is workable fixative, that's right. Thank you, Suzanne. So basically we are taking the um, alcohol ink and we are, trans sorry, I'm just, I cleaned my brayer off a little bit here. We're going to transfer it to paper, but it, it's a really tricky, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So we'll, we'll have to see. And again, it's all how much paint you put on. But the white paint is supposed to be attaching itself to the alcohol ink and pulling it up. Okay. Ooh. So we got one pull. Yeah. Um, I can show you some better ones, but let's just try one more thing here. Because it's still just showing us still see the paint. All right, so here's a little bit better layer. Let's 
see if that works any better. So I like the kind of distressed look that it gives you. It pulls, it's a little bit behind the white. So let's try. And Susan, uh, yes, this can be done on fabric. Okay, this one is a little wet. So this is gonna do something different. We don't know what it is, what it's gonna do. But we'll find out. I would suggest when you're doing, using a jelly plate and this type of paint and things that you don't try to do it for 15 minutes, okay? It does take some time to get yourself in the habit and the feeling of how much paint that it does. Every time I start it, it takes a little bit of time to do it. Um, do I need to add a fabric medium? To the paint. Um, no, because you already if have. If you're a using artistic artifacts, textile paints, the white, which is really a great thing. No, you don't. It has the textile medium in it already. So your fabric people are are ooing and awing, and and they're they're ready to try it on fabric. Good, good. Okay, Linda, we expect to see something. See, that one's much better. But look, it took me four tries to get the feeling of it. So I don't, I, I give yourself some time to play. This is one that we did last night. Someone thought I was being attacked. I was screaming and jumping up and down. I was so amazed. Um, let's see some of the other ones. Okay, these two. This piece was alcohol inks with the white paint. This was alcohol inks over hand sanitizer. Um, you can really see the difference. I tend to like this distressed look a little bit more. And no, I did, we didn't try it with aloe. So aloe's doesn't, uh, hand sanitizer has alcohol base in it. So that was one of the reasons we think that that was suggested. Um, this one was we took the alcohol ink and held the plate up like this so it poured this was the hand sanitizer alcohol with then this is non hand sanitizer with just the white paint so we did play now these pieces, this one, this is my favorite because of course it has every color in the rainbow on it. I would use these as pieces. I would cut circles out of them, birds out of them, all you guys with your die cutters, I would use those and glue them in. So to me, these are kind of accent pieces. You have a couple questions. Yep. One is, uh, is alcohol ink permanent on fabric? Um, we have not washed it yet. I assume that it is. Um, that's how we treat it. I don't know. Has any? But I've gotten it on my clothes and it never came out. Just like acrylic paint got on my clothes and it never comes out. Um, but I have not run the tests yet. I would definitely do that. So for our quilts and things that are not going to be washed, sure, go for it. No problem. Um, if you're going to use it on something that will be washable, you're going to need to test it. And there's another one is, um, if you keep practicing this, do you get to where you know what to expect in the results? And I know your answer ahead of time is <laughs> you like the surprise. I do, I like the surprise. I think um, we have a teacher who has taught gelatin printing for us and she would answer that question that yes, she can predict. 
Um, me, I don't try to predict. I just go for color. Like this is Susan Gantz. So she can predict and she, that's how she works. But it's Susan's birthday today. Oh, is she on? Happy birthday, Susan. She's, she's done some, I mean, she does some really awesome, awesome stuff. And so uh, we hope one day that we can do classes again and we will have Susan here. But she is a very predictable personality. She practices to make sure she knows how the outcome is going to be. Me, I just go with the flow. I'm, I'm, you know, if it didn't work, we put more paint on it. If it did work, then I save it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's easy. Um, all right. I got one more thing. I was told, I knew I was going to run over half an hour. I'm sorry about that, but bear with me here. I wanted to show you what you can do with some, I think, basic household items, me and found. So some of you are already familiar with printing. with found objects. But, so this is bubble wrap. Bubble wrap comes in small size, medium size, large size, and it is great. Now there's not much paint on this, so it's gonna be faint when it comes up. I can kind of predict if I'm going to be a mushy print or a non-mushy print by how much paint is on there. But So this is just bubble wrap. Most of us are getting shipments sent to our house, so that's something. Now, Valentine's Day, for some of us, bring... Um, candy so what you do with the candy containers is you can print with them so after you enjoy this is the fresco paints candy containers We're gonna do it this way. And it, I would get a different print if I printed so the, I could either do it this way or this way. This is what we tried last night. I didn't get too much paint off of this the last time I tried, but we'll see. Again, I, you can tell I don't waste anything. I always have lots of pieces. Oh, that worked better than last night. Um, ah, okay. Strathmore makes cards and they make it with the mixed media. So I always, um, I do sell cards in the store just as a, Kind of, it gives me an outlet. And I usually always plate my first layer of my mixed media cards. It just changes and I try to do these um, you know batch them together so that I have multiples and then when I have time I'll go through and um, do my collaging on them so I tend to do the paint first and then collaging um, ah, sprays like I know there's something else I need to tell you before we sign off. Um, these are marabou sprays. They do have fabric ones, but we actually did not buy those. But why we bought these is because they're acrylic paint. They are gonna dry faster 
then um, most of the other sprays are alcohol based. And um, I just, I don't know. I go to put the spray on at the end and when you, it, it just came out to be a mess. So I'm trying to be a little more organized in that. But I would spray them through the stencil. These are brand new, so I got it. Shake them. Now, the one thing about sprays, and you guys might be more familiar with this than I am, but it's going to give you um, some of them clog. Metallics, based on the nature of the paint, are going to clog. And, and you can see a little bit of the stencil here, but I'm really just adding color to it through the stencil so it's not a 100% spray. So here's a little bit of a flower. You can see I moved the stencil around. I did not plop the stencil in the middle and line up the edges. It's just not in my nature to do that. And then you have to let it dry and I can do another layer over it. So these sprays are really nice because they dry fast. Oh, you see some my piece pack here. We got another shipment from India. It has these beautiful embroidered pieces. So we're working on getting those up so you can see we sold out of them in the first part. So I ordered a few more. So um, let us know if you're interested. I see lots of hearts there. Yeah, they are gorgeous. They are absolutely gorgeous. All right, let's see if we can, again, I'm all about saving time. Let's see if we can do some of this. Got some on the back, I don't care. Do you get a reverse print from, can you then put that on something um, else? Should be. Let's see. Got to rub it. No, you got it on it here. got a little bit on there. So. Did I put it down? Oh, put it on this one. It should definitely come off. A little bit. That's what's nice. Look at what my white edges did. That picked it up nicely. Okay, then my last trick for the day is how do I clean my um, plate? Use packing tape. And then you've created your own washi tape. So.